When you hear that nearly 1,400 South Dakotans have died of COVID-19, it can seem like just another statistic. That's until it hits home. A uh, quick South Dakota woman wanted to put a face to the struggle that so many people have with the coronavirus. It began three months ago for Barb Myers. And as Angela Kennecke shows us in tonight's Eye on Cattleland, the 69-year-old documented every step of her COVID-19 journey on Facebook. She was passionate uh, about a lot of things. She loved life. Roger Myers says his wife of 16 years especially loved pets. This is her Morky Presley and her Yorkie Emily. Eventually, Emily had a little stroke and we had to put her down, but we, she saved her ashes. Not only was Barb a pet person, she was a people person. Her latest retail job was at Shields as a cashier. You didn't just check out with her. Um, she, she made relationships. Even though she was active, Barb suffered from asthma. COVID-19 hit her hard in the middle of October. And she couldn't breathe. Roger rushed her to the emergency room. Basically, she was needing a lot of oxygen, uh, almost 40 liters. Barb began her Facebook diary of her hospitalization. On October 19th, she posted, in hospital with COVID. Don't be afraid to test if you suspect it. Wear a mask, wash, sanitize, everything you can do for you and all those you are around. This is no picnic. In fact, it is horrible. She was very, very vocal about that. And I think that's one of the reasons why she started to post. Um, hey, wear your mask. Um, she wanted people to know the reality. Exactly, exactly. It, that this is real. This is what's happening to me. Um, and say, this could happen to you or your family members. For the first two weeks, Barb was hospitalized. Roger wasn't allowed to visit her. And she would text me, I'm, I'm having a good day. I'm having a bad day. On October 22nd, she posted this. Tried to have my pity party cry last night. Extremely difficult to breathe with oxygen running. Had to make a choice, so crying is not an option. The isolation is very difficult. A day later, she shared photos from her hospital room with her finger hooked up to an oxygen monitor. She thanked friends and family for their well wishes. The depression has been really bad, and looking at all the balloons raises my spirits. Thank you all. Then, on October 25th, signs of hope. Bit of color in my face, skin, breathing a bit easier. While she anticipated going home, she also issued a warning. This has affected all areas of my body, she wrote. Just a flu does not do this to you or your body. Hey, this isn't a joke. Um, people go through this every single day. On October 27th, Barb wrote, Hard night, the loneliness, isolation comes bearing down during those early hours. Contact consists of the fantastic staff, but they are not family you want around you. No one except another patient can understand these feelings. The next day, Barb was moved to Select Specialty Hospital, a 24-unit bed within Sanford Hospital that's run by a separate company. That's when Roger was allowed to visit her again during a two-hour time frame once a day. On November 2nd, Barb posted a photo of herself with a nurse and a walker. One of her proudest days was you know, teaching her how to walk, getting her back into her walker. Barb posted, Help is necessary, but I am making it, and I will survive. Barb did better for a few days, but on November 5th, she posted a photo of her leg, which had turned color. Yet she was still positive she would be home by Christmas. And the nurses, I can't, I can't speak enough for them. Barb posted photos of the nurses she had grown close to during her long stay, but continued to yo-yo between hope and feeling worse. On her fourth week in the hospital, Barb wrote that she was missing her fur babies and my friends and so much at home. On November 13th, she shared with her followers what it was like during her 10 days in the ICU. It is tough since you are aware death can come at any time to anyone in one of the rooms around you. You cry for the person as well as the family. Barb's last post was on December 5th. She wrote, third IV of the day, I did my exercises for my leg muscles. Eventually, they will start working properly again. She was still, uh, in my opinion, trying to get out of there. Only five days later, Barb was dying. 
Roger was by her side with her other favorite companion. And I got to bring Presley up there for, you know, a couple of hours to be with her. He also brought the ashes of her Yorkie, Emily. You know they're going to a better place. You, you, you keep that in mind. Um, you have to. Um, and you're just there to escort. As an escort, um, and I brought, uh, as, a, as a help for Barb, um, the ashes of uh, Emily up there with her because um, there's a little saying, we'll meet again on the Rainbow Bridge. The end of Barb's COVID-19 diary on Facebook included a live stream of her funeral. You can help the family honor Barb as they raise a Smirnoff screwdriver in Barb's memory. Because if she were able, her family is fairly certain she'd announce that it is party time. December 4th marked Rogers and Barb's 16th wedding anniversary. Barb is survived by three adult children, three adult stepchildren and their spouses, as well as nine biological and three step-grandchildren.